Hello, this is Eric of Not Bao, so welcome to the Ultra Gear from LG Ultimate Experience. Now, what's the difference between any of the Ultra Gear monitors? Well, they're all the same panel, so almost everything will be identical. They're all the same contrast ratio, at least within 100 of each other. They're all IPS panels, and they are all, well, brightness about max 400 nits. So, right off the bat, don't even use HDR setting. It's just not a good idea. And most of these settings are going to be good for a game console. But I'm going to go through the game console settings first and then continue on to the PC. Now let's get started. Now for gaming consoles, let's get this out of the way quickly. Turn response time to off rather than having it on fast. Yes, you actually want to slow it down. I have a video all about that that I made. You'll see the little thing up above here. And I got it in comments below so you can just simply go to that link I actually talk about it. I don't have a gaming console personally because I'm all about the PC just to be honest. And gaming consoles also have lower refresh rates, so it doesn't matter if you can't hit 120 hertz because you can hit only a max of 100 hertz with this monitor through HDMI. And almost every gaming monitor is focused on DisplayPort, not HDMI. It is what it is. Now let's get to the PC experience. And on the PC here, I'm going to be showing here with Windows 10. So if you have a Mac, your experience could be different. If you're running AMD and NVIDIA, I'm running NVIDIA uh, for my graphics card. You're going to have your own AMD settings, which I explain quickly because it's adaptive zinc. With NVIDIA, it says G-Sync compatible. And honestly, they're the same term technologies, just different name. Now let's get on this. Install that display uh, adapter drivers and the proper control panel. Don't go with some old drivers. Get the new current ones, at least for the, your current graphics card, so you can change your settings. If you can't change your settings, you're going to be losing out in what you can actually do with this monitor. You want to run its native resolution, which is 2560 by 1440 native resolution, at the highest refresh rate, and with an output color depth of 10 bit if you can. The difference between 8 bit and 10 bit. Is 10 bit, you're less likely to see what's called dithering. It will give you better image quality, especially if you do any photo or video editing. Is there any performance hit? Well, there could be when you turn HDR on, but again, we're not using that. And almost nothing has 10 bit color except for photos and um, high end video cameras. So, yeah, and you want full dynamic range, not limited. You definitely want that full dynamic range. That's very important. And run in DisplayPort. Do not use HDMI whatsoever unless you have to. At HDMI, you're losing your 10-bit color option, and you're also going to be limited to 100 Hz refresh rate with adaptive uh, FreeSync, which it says G-Sync, but it's not a true G-Sync. It's actually G-Sync compatible. This monitor, it's not. There's no G-Sync module in this. It's a mod. It's it's adaptive Sync, which adaptive Sync is G-Sync, but with the out the Nvidia attacks, I guess you could say it is. So make sure you have it enabled, the G-Sync and G-Sync compatible, and make it enabled for window and full screen, rather than just limit yourself to full screen. Now, I don't have an ATI card here to actually show you the menu, but you're gonna have a menu that's gonna have different things. Let's say adaptive sync. In terms of the in NVIDIA, it says G-Sync compatible. Make sure that's turned on in your menu here for your 3D settings. G-Sync compatible, that's what you want. You can change your max frame rate, doesn't really matter, but you don't really want to go over 144 hertz because then you get image tearing again. Let's say if you have a lousy graphics card and it's very limiting you and you're stuck at like only 70 frames per second or you might get stuttering because your graphics card literally can't handle the frame rate, cap it off. Make sure it's over 40 for sure, but stay close to what your max frame rate is and go maybe a little below. That might help you with a bit of stuttering if you have that issue. If you turn it off, it's gonna hit over 144 hertz. That is up to you what you wanna do, but for best dependability, leave it around 144 or 143 as I have for my max frame rate. How do you turn HDR on or off? And is it true that I really don't want HDR on? Well, let's find out now. Click that start button on the bottom left. Go up to that settings cog. Click on that. And from there, go to system, which shows displays, sound, notifications, and power. So click on that. 
And now you can see display settings, you see color, it says night light, windows, HD color, but below that says play HDR games and apps. By default, this actually should be off, but let's see what happens when you turn it on. Let's see look how bad this looks. Windows itself turns it on within the Windows environment without even being in a game. Honestly, do you think this looks good? I didn't think so. So keep it off. So you might wonder, are there any other settings you might want to change? Well, yes there is from this menu. You may want to go to graphic settings and make sure games are optimized for variable refresh rate. That'll actually help things to smooth out, which reduces screen tearing and allows for higher frame rates by enabling variable refresh rate for games. So now let's get to the monitor settings. You want to press that little button at the bottom of the screen, push it up. Then this will pop up right here. Choose settings so you push to the right. And now you can see what's enabled, 144Hz, Adaptive Zinc, HDR off, we want that off. Fast response time is the best one to use. Do not use fast, this you'll get what's called reverse ghosting, where you're gonna image after the image, so it'll be a different color. Uh, reverse ghosting uh, kind of thing is the opposite color of what you see. Normally it'll show up with like a purple most of the time. I gotta change the brightness, and bring that up and it'll look better, however, 100% brightness is not the ultimate experience. Honestly, with this monitor, you kind of want to run around 50% or so. A lot of time I find myself doing about 40%. Gets a better use getting used to because the whites aren't going to look as bright, but your darks going to look bright darker. Well, the problem is too much light signs, shines through this monitor. So honestly, you're going to be stuck around 50% or so brightness if you want the best experience. Contrast, 70% is perfect. Sharpness, you can do 50%, 60% is fine, 60% is where I like it. Gives it a little bit more sharpness. If I go too low or too high, if I get too high, you can start to see almost halos around certain text on a different background. If I gray against, uh, against these words here, you actually see a halo. So that's where you want to be 60 or lower and you don't have any artifacts. Go too low, of course, lower than 50. It really this doesn't look good, okay? Don't tell me that looks good. It doesn't. Okay, 50% or 60% is your best experience. I personally like 60 because it doesn't artifact. And now let's go back to our game modes here. First person shooter, it's quite blue. Oh yeah, and I forgot Gamer 1 is very blue shifted as well. RTS. Again, these are going to be settings that you may want to choose. I don't like them. I like Accuracy Gamer 2 is very accurate, but it's a little oversaturated. It's just perfect for me because it looks good. Vivid. Vivid doesn't look... It uh, looks kind of washed out. It's almost giving an HDR type look to it, but again, it's blue shifted. Reader is very yellow. Gets rid of all the... basically all the blue color light. And believe me, you don't need to avoid blue color light. If you do that for all your life, guess what? You're gonna damage your eyes. Any place trying to sell you blue lenses, they're trying to make money off you. Don't fall for that scam. Blue light is not bad for you or else you better stay with the sun for the rest of your life. Blue light comes with the sun. Now, HDR effect, totally exaggerated, blown out. It's not a good color to use, not a good setting to use if you want things to look good. It's only an effect. Uh, now, if I go back here to S, RGB gives you the most accuracy, but it looks dull. And just so you know, you can be blocked out of a bunch of menus. And some of these settings are blocked out of other menus. That's why I like that's why I like Gamer 2. It's pretty accurate, but still nice color tone. You can change your settings. So what, you can't change your gamma, it's not a big deal. The gamma is actually accurate, the color temperature is accurate, the RGB is fairly accurate, so. Black stabilizer at 55% will give you the most accuracy. In terms of uh, looking black, still looking black without going gray, because if you start turning this right up, you're gonna lose all your uh, black tones and just go more gray shifted. 55 is high as you want, 50 is fine-ish. Go lower than that, and you're gonna start to suffer from black crush. Black crush is when your colors all crush together and it looks awful. 
response time? Fast is the best one. If you're using a gaming console, turn it off. Just turn it off. It's not good with a gaming console. Faster, that's no good. Okay, fast is best. Make sure, of course, your adaptive zinc is turned to on. Adaptive zinc is, uh, will stop that screen tearing and give you a little bit of a smoother frame rate. I'm going to be doing a video on how to set your PC to get the best experience possible. That'll be a different video. Having the right monitor for the job. Your monitor displays what you have, but a monitor does not speed up your computer system. It does not do anything except display what your computer puts out. So honestly, beyond your monitor settings, the ultimate piece experience gives you the ultimate monitor experience. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching and have yourselves a wonderful day. This is not BIOS Tech and Hardware.